Hello, all you beautiful people out there. I just want to say Happy Mother's Day. And um, I hope that your day is filled with those who love and honor you. Because uh, we know in truth, in nature, in spirit, that without the mother, nobody would be here. We need a mother to give birth to things. And it is the feminine side of the male female that gives birth. Yes, the male plants the seed, but without the feminine, there's no birth. And the seed can be planted anywhere, you know. So a sacred birth, a sacred marriage, a sacred thing is always good. So I don't know where we're going today with this, but I do know that the creative force of the Holy Spirit is the Divine Feminine. You get no son if you don't have a Divine Feminine. You have no child. Men can't carry a child. Men can't nurture a child. Men can't bring up a child. So we have to have a Divine Feminine. Vulnerability. Ah, look how them sunflowers stand up there, vulnerable to the sky, vulnerable to rain, vulnerable to everything, but boy, do they shine. Look how beautiful they are. Mother Earth, wow. Mother Earth, boy, don't Mother Earth produce some beautiful children, whether it's flowers or creatures you know, our puppy dogs, our, um, you know, our children, you know, we produce these beautiful, beautiful things. And of the divine male and the divine female, the divine feminine is a creator. So I look at everything a little bit different as everybody else. I see the divine mother um, very much in creation because without a mother there is no birth there is no new creation nothing new can happen without the mother to be here to incubate the child whatever kind of child it is as far as spiritual material physical mental uh, emotional and to give birth to it that all may see right and in order to have a child in order to carry a child when we carry our children we're kind of vulnerable right to those things that are around us and tell you the truth our child is vulnerable to those things that are around us because they pick up on the vibrations and such that are directed at us how the child is conceived um, and uh, the intentions behind the conception. A lot of children today are without parents because the parents had either too many children or the children didn't make the grade and they kind of got tossed off to the side. I see kids everywhere walking, not quite in their right mind, homeless youth, lots of them discarded different children, no place to go. It's sad. It's really sad. And having a child should be seen as a sacred act between two people in a contract desiring to make the best life for that child because they're responsible for the life of that child. And, you know, when we give birth to our children, do we not love them? Yes, we do, don't we? We want them to come into a better world than we had. And, you know, I'm not sure where this is going. It's Mother's Day. That's what, why we're a mother. Children, our children make us a mother. <clears throat> and so, you know, as we go through life and love our children and they grow up, uh, they they're not really our children. We are their caretakers because they go out into the world at a certain age and become their own people. 
and this must be allowed as well. You know, uh, it's a give and take relationship between a mother and her child. Most children honor us on this day, Mother's Day. Blessed be all the children of the world, of the planet. Blessed be from every species, all species, uh, animal species, mineral species, you know, tree species, <laughs> all species. Three of Wands. Well, I have no idea. Let me think. Three of Wands. Oh, yes. Waiting for that ship to come in. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And again, this brings me back to children. Because once children get to a certain age, it seems we are waiting on them. But, you know, it says that raise your children right and they'll return to you. You know, they have to go out into the world. They got to find themselves who they are. And then they come back and they come and visit us on Mother's Day, right? This is Moon in Aries. Sure enough, Moon in Aries. You know, I really do want to see what this says. Moon in Aries. Let's look. Three of Wands. Discovery, exploration, vision, a project that is fulfilled. Here the sun is in Aries, a sign that it is like its home, the sunny, courageous, and very willful nature of this card recalls many aspects of this astrological position. In the Three of Wands, we find vision. The project becomes clear. After the initial energy of the Ace and the choice of two, we can now embark on the wild and the unknown adventure that awaits us out there. We are still on the threshold in that place that gives us a glimpse of the wonders that await that we can encounter if we just have the courage to continue. This makes me think of our children, but it also makes me think of us because, you know, the feminine has been held down so much that they didn't even call the Holy Spirit the divine feminine. There was a father, there was a son, but they hid the fact that there was a mother too. And, you know, that's, uh, we're waiting for this, being courageous and adventurous to think about this and if it's true. And again, I must say, without the, the feminine, without the mother, the mother, happy Mother's Day, all mothers, there would be no sons or no daughters because the mother is the carrier of the seed. And if you think back, we actually carry eggs from all the way back to the beginning when we were first created. Can you imagine that? Isn't that a miracle? And you know, if you're good enough and psychic enough, you can actually contact those eggs and talk to them from the past of what it was like. You carry all these things in you. Can you imagine that, women? Ladies, ladies, you carry everything in you. The past, you carry creation, you carry light, you carry love, you carry nurturing. You're, you're awesome, and women are awesome. And, you know, really, when it comes to housekeeping and taking care of the kids, there's nothing like having a mother around. Fathers are awesome, don't get me wrong, but this isn't Father's Day, this is Mother's Day. And mothers have a special touch because we can create goodwill, good things, heart, love, good directions for our family and our friends and those who gather around us. Page of Swords, that be the truth. That be the truth. Page of Swords. Yes. Yes, we do. Now, let's go to the Good Tarot. The messages of the Good Tarot. And because today is Mother's Day, you know, all men love their mothers. All men have been taught, you know, there was like these double standards that we got between men and women. 
but we're really all just the same human. Um, men have great nurturing skills too, and I don't, I don't take that away. My father was a good father. I loved him. He was very good to me. And uh, on the other hand, my mother, you know, wasn't so much. So, you know, I just want you to know that the divine feminine resides in males and females. And she is attainable through love, open-heartedness. This is when we become a divine feminine, when we open our heart to everything. The love, the pain, the joy, the sadness, and understand that life is in cycles and layers. And as you know, our children can be the biggest pain. And, you know, well, let me just say those that we love the most is where the biggest pains come from. Uh, the more energy and power and, and idealism we put into those that we love, expecting them to be something, blah, 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 you know, the bigger hurts we have when it doesn't turn out. And that's true. Ten of water, Buddha. I get it. <laughs> I'm telling you that's the truth. You cannot have attachments no matter how much you want to hold on to your children, we have to release them to move out into the world, to learn the things that they were born on this planet to learn. Because nothing, nothing belongs to us. Everything belongs to the spirit. Everything belongs to this planet. When we pass on, we don't take anything with us. When we come back, we don't bring anything with us. We just bring ourselves. It is just us. And so when we have no attachments, when we don't try to attach to our children, when we don't try to attach to our spouses, we leave the freedom and space to learn to love ourselves and learn what we want out of life. And that's what this is all about, Mother's Day. To be a mother is a very special job, but you got to also remember that you yourself are your own people. You're, you're a human. You, you are, you know, um, you're not just a mother and a wife. You're a person. You have loves and desires and wants and needs, dreams. And uh, today, even though it is Mother's Day, what did your mother want for you? So are you giving to you what your mother wanted for you so that your children can see that as you work towards your dreams, it teaches them to work towards their dreams? For you to be strong teaches them to be strong. For you to have intention teaches them intention. Yes, Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Without attachment, without expecting anything, just doing the things that you need to do to help you be strong, to be capable of coping with all the things that come in through having a family with different personalities, with different... Um, objections and different ideas and trying to bring all this together into a family is not always easy. Sometimes there's turmoil and at that time mostly on holidays. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is don't expect anything from anybody other than yourself and when you do get it, just be grateful. Know that you are number one in your life. Not your children, but you. And when I say that you are number one in your life, what I'm saying is that when you give your heart to too many things, such as sometimes we invest everything into our children, but they leave home, they go away, they do stuff, and that's when you have to learn to invest in yourself because if not, you'll have a broken heart. It will break your heart when your children go away and you haven't released them, or you haven't let them go. You know, my son was missing for seven years. I had to release that. I had to let it go. I couldn't worry about it. I prayed about it. I prayed and asked God, but like through the day, I did not worry. I could not do that because it would, it would have left me nuts. 
I could not attach to that because I would have had a broken heart continuously. After all these years, and I found my son, and I'm, I'm so grateful. We just found him a few months ago, and already he's on his way towards healing and doing better. But the thing is, is that I could not, if I had been attached to all that was going on with my children, him missing and all, um, it would have been really hard for me to have gotten through those seven years. So having faith that God would bring him home to me, and we need, this is where, you know, the universe or God to me is very important because I do put my faith in God. I do believe that he wants the best for me. And that's why I share what I do with you guys so that you can see that you are the same in God's eye. God loves you. And he wants the best for you too. We're coming into a new world and a new change. Nothing is the same. I got two cards. We got Knight of Cups. Romantic, lofty thoughts, passionate inspiration, charming, great people skills, idealism, sensitive, intuition, focus on emotion, compassionate. Yes, we are definitely coming into the new age. Um, there's no doubt about it where people are going to begin to be nicer to people. Love is going to spread more readily. And mother's love is so important at this time of compassion, but also with justice and truth. You know, you, you can't love people who are unlovable. And if they're unlovable, they need to know the truth. They need to know why they're unlovable. I can't love you because you, you know, and it upsets me. And, you know, I feel as if you're not hearing me out. So cooperation, working in relationships, mother-child, mother-father, mother, um, you know, mother-friend, uh, very important relationships are so important to the family aren't they and if anybody gets knocked off they can knock the whole family off right so we try to go around with our heart and love and you know to calm the family down make things stable find peace in our hearts that we can share with those that we care about very much and this is kind of what i do you know i I don't know about you, but this is what I work towards because I want my life to be like this. And I know you want your life to be like this too. Which means, you know, if we want a life like this, we have to call out this. If somebody has broken our heart and they act as if, you know, they've done nothing, they act as if, um, you know, they sweep it under the rug and stuff. We don't hide those things. We bring those things out to the open. We don't let people hide things and get away with things because that doesn't bring this. This is satisfaction with self and knowing that you can stand up for yourself and take up for yourself and love yourself, guarding the garden gate. See, she's guarding her gate. She's guarding her, her pentacles, her life, her all the good things, her peace, her patience, her love, her forgiveness, all these things that she has that she's guarding. And we can only get into this garden if we respect ourselves, right? Try to respect ourselves. Respect yourself. Respect yourself. Come on, mothers. We deserve more credit than we have gotten. Those of us who nurture and love others have um you know been looked at as weak but what they don't understand those of us who love and nurture others are powerful strong powerful strong and we are needed on this planet to hold ourselves together because we're going through a world change everything is changing right before our very eyes and we are going into a place that's going to be better for everybody. We just have to be ready. We prepare ourselves with truth, love, justice, judgment, then justice. We make a judgment, and from our judgment flows to justice. That's karma. We judge righteously. 
not because they're our family, not because uh, if I don't judge them right, they'll be mad at me, not because if I, you know, if I tell them how I feel, they'll ignore me and punish me. We don't worry about punishment. They can't punish us. If we're telling the truth, there is no punishment. As mothers, it's our responsibility to take charge of those who are around us that are not walking the right way or going to bring trouble into the home and chaos. Chaos. I don't know if any of y'all ever lived with anybody that caused chaos, but I sure have. And believe me, my best lesson was to learn to control that, get that chaos out of the way. Move the chaos. Because I'm all about law and order, love. And when I say law, order, and love, I'm saying if you make a mess, you clean it up. Yeah, right? Yeah, I don't care if you're a man, a woman, a child. If you're making a mess, even a child can help you clean up their mess. You can let him help. As you clean up that mess, let that child help and take some responsibility. It teaches them. I taught my children like that. Yeah, you can help. You can help around the house do chores. Yeah, it takes a little bit of the load off you and gives you a chance to appreciate yourself and your time because you are a mother and you do do a lot and you're usually busy 24-7. Even when you're asleep, you're thinking what you got to do tomorrow. I understand that. I love you guys. I understand. I've been a mother. I've been a grandmother. You know, I still am a mother and a grandmother. So I understand. And uh, today I just want you to know that you're very valuable to God. You're valuable to creation. You're very much needed to stand in your power, in your truth, as um, mothers who teach their children the simple things in life, cleaning up after themselves, watch how they talk to other people, um, prepare yourself for the bigger world, you're going to get shock after shock, you know, these things that are our job so that when our children go out into the world, they're better children. Yeah, I've, the kids just ain't getting taught today, but of course, when they have to be at the babysitters all day and all the babysitter wants is for mom to come and get the kids. She's just doing it for money. What do you expect? What do you expect? Ace of Pentacles, yes. Fresh starts, prosperity, success, achievements, contentment, enjoyment, health, wealth, security, auspicious meetings and challenges. Yes, ladies, yes. Ace of Pentacles, yes. You deserve blessings upon blessings for being a mother. You know, I ain't going to do this reading too long today. Pray for me. I've been wanting to start doing it every day again. I've had a lot of things going on in my life. My my, my son is back and uh, recuperating me him and getting him off drugs at the state mental institution, put him on that he really didn't need and having him checked. And, wow, it's just been a lot of stuff. So I'm asking all you people, please say a prayer for me. Pray for my son. Pray for all the living creatures on this planet and that goodwill will come to us all. And I'm going to close this out with Mother's Day. I love you. God bless you. Stand in your power, Mama, because without you, nobody would be. And so you brought those children into the world. It's up to you to show them the way to truth and light and love. It's up to you to teach them to open their hearts. It's up to you to work on yourself and show them the creator that you truly are. If you can create a child, you can create anything. You're very powerful. Think about that. You brought soul into this world. And it's up to you to teach that soul how to work in this world and be happy and joyful. It is your time to shine, Mama. I love you. God bless. May the power of the Holy Spirit, the great creator of all great things, be with you. Amen. Da-da-da-da.